Okay, lovely to see everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to ask the panel briefly to introduce yourselves. I know some people have like obviously just heard you, Kevin, but just introduce yourselves again, and then we can get on with some questions. Hello, everyone. It's me again, <laughs> Kevin from DKM, um, the co-founder and CEO. Uh, yeah. Um, Annie from ZK Pass um, on the marketing and BD side. Uh, if you missed my presentation, uh, we are a uh, private data verification protocol. Uh, essentially, we can verify stuff on Web2. For example, your age, your nationality, and mint um, SBTs and move it onto the chain. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is David. I work uh, on DevRel and developer experience at Tyco. And we are building a ZK roll-up uh, or a type 1 ZK EVM. So, yeah, lovely to be here. Thank you. So, I'm English, so you're going to hear me say ZK a lot. But, <laughs> but you know, everyone knows what I mean. So, I, I'm going to try and say ZK just for you all, right? Um, so, if there's anyone who doesn't really know what ZK is, zero knowledge and zero, zero knowledge proofs, can... David, can you just explain briefly and very, very simply what a zero knowledge proof is? Okay, I can try. So a zero knowledge proof is all about hiding some type of information and not giving everything to uh, try to prove something. So for example, like you may want to prove that you have knowledge about some uh, password or, or some type of information, but you're able to do that without actually disclosing uh, that information. So it's useful in um, for privacy applications because you can prove something but not actually show that information, but it's also useful for roll-ups because you don't need to provide as much data because you can kind of hide some away and just prove some stuff, so yeah. So. This talk is about privacy, this talk is about scaling, because that's more what Tyco is into, and actually about innovation, so we'll be talking about the latest trends and what's new, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, Annie, so this question is, what does ZK have to do with privacy? And like, I think that ties in a lot with what ZK Pass is trying to do. Um, I always like to use examples. Um, for example, you know, like we always get that question, are you over 18 or not? So I, I, I want to show you whether I'm over 18, obviously yes, uh, but I don't want you to know exactly how old I am, right? So that brings the question of how much are you disclosing and is it on a need to know basis? So essentially, for example, how we are proposing to uh, resolve that is, um, so for example, I am Australian, indeed, and we have the government website called MyGov, which has everything about myself, all my legal identity. So it will pop up once I log in, be like, any of your data birth is this. So essentially what we're trying to do is, I can uh, mint uh, SVT a credential, a ZK credential, to say whether, to prove whether I'm over 18 or not, yes or no. So that is enough to verify the fact that I'm over 18, but not telling you everything about myself. So hence, you know, being able to generate that proof um, without disclosing the actual information is at the very core of ZKP. Awesome. And like, Kevin, this is for you. So can you explain the role of ZKPs in scaling solutions for blockchain? Um, I think we can see this problem from a uh, different perspective. First we have uh, like Echo, we have this ZK roll-up to scale, you know, uh, Ethereum, and, um, yeah, with, with uh, ZKP uh, capability. And also, uh, if we see from the ZKM's perspective, um, what we are trying to build is that it's not just to scale the, uh, layer two, you know, we can also connect with layer one and also non-blockchain use cases. And uh, our goal is that to make Ethereum the global settlement layer. So 
Um, it's not just the blockchain use case. So in that way, we can scale uh, the blockchain space to or connect with uh, you know non-blockchain use cases as well. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so this is a question for all three of you. Um, what are the main challenges and obstacles in the adoption of zero knowledge proofs, and how might these be overcome? So it's really about adoption and how we get this technology out to the masses. All right. Um, this is an interesting question. So whenever I think about adoption, I think about how complex Ethereum usually is for most of its community. Uh, so one example of that is we were just at a hackathon, ETHCON, and we see a lot of people working on account abstraction lately. And I think um, things like this, it, like it was clear to me to see at this hackathon that these types of abstractions for the users and simplifying things and moving all of these complex technologies and putting them into the background is really the most important part. Uh, to some degree, a lot of these complexities with like ZK are not really important for the user, but they're important for the infrastructure designers and developers and things like that. So yeah, I think one thing is just developing and hiding more abstractions away from the user. So you know they're not really concerned about like what ZK and all of these things are. They just get to use the product that is actually built. And then on top of that, just making it, um, I think we need some like uh, uh, some more like education on how people can actually develop these types of like ZK uh, applications and things like that. I think some of the work at like ZKM is going to be very interesting as well to like kind of usher in this new wave of this more like general Z ZK uh, uh, ZKPs that are outside of just Ethereum. Um, yeah. Um, challenges, um, I think. On a more general bit is obviously it's quite a complex, you know, cryptography like calculation and all that. So it imposes like certain level of like just complexity in terms of like the initial setup, the circuit uh, programming and all that, even processing requirement. So I guess our dev team, you know, like obviously they want to bring down the ZKP generation speed. And how do we do that with the computational overhead and all that? They, they are all challenges, right? And when your circuit has like so many gates and if something doesn't work, you literally need to go through kind of everything and that's all, you know, nitty gritty of it. And um, in terms of like, uh, if talking about community adoption challenges, um, I'm guessing, you know, that's also where we want to start is for you folks who are very familiar with Web3, it's it's probably a very easy concept, but for those like more general public who are more focused, you know, they're they're used to handing a lot of their private data onto big centralized platforms, apps. Then you you need to convince them, hey, actually, what about if your data can actually reside within your own hands, and and you you don't need to be so worried about data leakage, your personal info uh, info getting hacked. And I'm sure all of us are receiving a lot of scam calls. I think in Australia last year alone, there were like two big incidents. Like one of them was a telecom carrier Optus. The other one was an insurance company. And essentially their the whole database got hacked. So every Australian intern are getting like, I don't know, two to three scam calls per day. And that's annoying. So, you know, like you gotta educate the more hopefully general public about the benefit of using ZKP and how that actually can make changes onto their private data protection. Yeah, uh, basically I, I agree with what you, what you have said. Uh, education and also, um, you know, um, like how to make this uh, knowledge some um, basic capability that actually you don't have to develop from scratch. You can just focus on your own you know, construction, community building, uh, business expansion and leave this kind of to some professional layer to handle. And that's uh, also you know, ZKM hope to achieve. Um, also from the technical perspective, the challenges are always how to get the proof size much smaller and in a much shorter time. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, I think I play this. Okay, cool. Um, so next question to do with like digital identity systems. Um, yeah, yeah, that's you, but you know, Dave or, 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 or Ken can jump in as well. So like how can zero knowledge proofs contribute to enhancing the security and privacy of digital identity systems? Yeah, so um, like I covered, I think um, obviously there are problems with the traditional way of verifying one's identity, namely, you know, there are some privacy concerns. Your your data resides within uh, with you know like some centralized platforms, apps, um, or it could be some external KYC service provider that they engaged. Um, so th that that's the traditional um, kind of like Web two of uh, doing things. And with the Web three, there are a lot of lot of DID projects, but it feels like uh, one most of them focus on on chain data. And two, some of them are quite, uh, how do I say? Um, uh, they're, they're, they're not like a comprehensive uh, integrated, like there are, it's almost like islands of like data here and there. Like you can probably have this project to prove that your, your events attendance, you have another project that only does like um, converting your passport information to like digital uh, mints and something else to prove you know, like it feels quite um, isolated, I would say. Um, so that brings us to the question of how, what, what hopefully is like a more comprehensive uh, identity solution that hopefully can uh, bridge the gap between Web2 and Web3 world. And essentially, you know, you wanna go to one place to prove who you are, what you have, what you've done or something like that, right? And that's, that can be very uh, useful. Um, especially, you, you know, in some of the examples that uh, even when we're talking to some of the um, banks, like just actual banks, for example, in Singapore, like you, you need to, in order to fulfill the uh, definition of wholesale investors, you need to prove that you have liquid asset of over, let's say, one mil scene um, equivalent. So for a lot of people, that I, I might not want to hand you my internet bank account balance and show you exactly how much I have. I only want to prove to you I am eligible to become accredited investors by proving that all I have at this moment in my bank account over one mil sin in liquid cash. So, you know, applications like that make sense and, and that's where we're striving to to, to tackle. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have anything to add. Yeah, that was pretty comprehensive, I'd say. All right. Let's get on to innovation, which is my like most kind of, you know, I'm always, I always like to be at the forefront of anything. So I'm always interested in the, the next new thing. So in terms of like zero knowledge proofs, are there any recent upcoming innovations in ZKPs that you find particularly promising or exciting? Like what are the new trends? Uh, yeah, I can cover this a little bit. So, I mean, one, again, I, and also Techno in general, is very excited about some of the work that ZKM, Risk Zero, like these ZKVMs are doing because it, um, it solves a lot of problems where traditionally you have to have like uh, circuit engineers just try to prove this very specific thing, the EVM, and it's quite nice to just have this be general right like you just write some rust code or some code in go and you can just prove that this was executed properly and um yeah so this is very interesting i'd say uh for us and the other thing is uh any kind of work on parallel computation because like generating proofs uh the expensive part of generating proofs i think can really be solved uh in a huge way by making the uh proof generation parallelized to some degree, and if you're able to do that, then we can kind of introduce the community, or just uh, maybe not the community, but like more people can start working on proofs and aggregating them together, and I think that is like very nice for unlocking like the scaling. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm very excited about like these ZK VMs, and um, 
Yeah, also just in general about like things happening off chain more. Uh, because the thing is, is with Ethereum, like when we thought about Ethereum, we were like, okay, this is kind of nice that we can make sure things like follow certain rules. And like, you're, you're just certain about certain things because of the uh, consensus guarantees that Ethereum had. And you kind of like, the thing is, is that consensus was always really expensive because you're repeating all of that execution. But now with like ZK, we see this thing where we can do a lot of stuff off chain. And I see a lot of use cases getting unlocked with like gaming and just all kinds of areas where like you can do stuff, more things off chain and just post a proof on chain instead of relying so much on this consensus layer that we wanted to give us the guarantees that it has. Um, so yeah, I think it's very nice, and I think it's a maybe a little bit of a paradigm shift for uh, designers of in, in this like decentralized space to where hey, like let's see how much we can do off chain and utilize zkps, and um, and see how much cheaper like we can kind of make things. So that's another area. And yeah. Uh, I need to the button. Thank you. You helped to cover a lot about the. Innovation part that uh, Zcam is uh, hope to achieve. Um, yeah, um, you know, um, I would say what excites me uh, mostly not only in the blockchain space, but also that the possibility to cover some non uh, blockchain use cases, which is like IoT or cloud computing. Uh, as you mentioned, you can upload contribution to, you know, um, off chain and then uh, generate proof and validate on on chain. Um, and also we have been in contact with you know uh, a lot of smart devices. Um, in the past they didn't take you know security so seriously. But now with the you know you, you uh, rely on all these untrusted devices to provide the computation but actually you don't know if the result is reliable or not. So um, we see a high possibility that ZKP can be utilized in these IoT devices uh, so that you can you know, prove the uh, computation, give them the new state, give them the final execution result, and they can rely on that. Yeah. So uh, that's a part, uh, I think, for the long, medium, medium to long term, uh -huh. yeah, uh, excitement. That was going to be my next question, actually, because, you know, obviously AI is all the rage. That's all anyone is talking about right now. And so I wanted to kind of discuss, like, the, the interplay between emerging technologies. You already mentioned IoT, you know, things like AI. How do you see that panning out with, with the zero-knowledge industry? Um, sure. So um, I, yeah, it, it's like, I, I agree kind of with the theme of what we've been saying with the off-chain things as well, where like, you know, I, I think that we're now going to be able to have systems where, yeah, you can get a proof back from some like AI response that it followed like some rules and it like was like well behaved and is the model that you think that it is. So. I hope that the incentives are there though. I guess that's the one thing that I wonder about. Like if they're, like what's the incentive for some person like uh, Google or like Microsoft, they're building some like chat GPT tool. Like where's the incentive to like give back a proof that it followed some rules or a certain model? Like, I mean, in, in my head, it, it would be very neat to be like, okay, here's some open source like large language model. And then we're gonna like generate proofs that this is like exactly uh, the model that was used so that like, you know, I don't know, so you don't have like some weird dystopian future or something, but I don't see the incentive, I guess. So that's one thing that I wonder about. Um, but yeah, I think I think it'll, um, there's a lot of potential for ZK to play uh, in, in that role. And um, yeah. I would say, you know, for, I heard a lot of people talking about ZKML. But this is a, a pretty new area that uh, I, I believe we all need to learn a lot. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, yeah. So like talking about advancements, you know, just thinking about the, the wider sort of tech community, 
including developers, researchers, etc. Um, how can how can we contribute to the advancement of zero knowledge proofs in the coming years? Like, you know, how can we make like a thriving sort of tech scene? And and it's you know I'm talking about adoption as well, but also the adoption of ZK proofs in the wider sort of tech community. Um, and Web3 community, like what can we do to kind of make it better? Um, so based on our experience, actually, um, the education and also some community engagement campaign will need to be, you know, implemented. Um, and that's why, you know, like in, in our project, we, we dedicate a large portion of the token to be uh, allocated to the open source dev community. We hope them um, to help to build all these compilers, on onboarding tools. I believe every project uh, will need that. Um, so they can you know, get involved and get reward. But also, you know, uh, I just mentioned for the compu uh, computation, for the proving part, you will need a lot of computation power. Um, this cannot be just provided by one of us. It needs to be a community engaged uh, computing uh, power pro uh, provision. So um, we also, you know, um, have a large portion of that part that we uh, we hope to uh, encourage all this community or minor community to engage and uh, provide the computation power in exchange for token rewards. So that's um, yeah, that's my take. We think we think there should be some education and engagement campaign. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think uh, CKP um, kind of like uh, re requires a certain like um, you know like level of entry in terms of like the computational complexity. And we obviously, like Kevin said, we want to encourage and we do need support from community. For example, like we might be able to, if we have our team member from, let's say, 10 jurisdictions, we might be able to establish data source like government ID, you know, like internet bank from those 10 jurisdictions. But apart from that, right, like we, if we want to, uh, let's say, do some banking in Brazil, right? We, we might want a local community member from Brazil who can actually help us with that establishment, right? That initial setup, that, that template, that circuit, initial kind of like compiling. So um, that means, um, which we are also working on is like try to develop like a template, so to speak, that's easier for the community to be able to adopt and use. Um, so yeah, like it, you know, like make it, relatively um, easier for the community to be able to contribute as well. And likewise, we also have like token allocation that will be used to incentivize that, even um, not running and stuff. So yeah, that's how I see definitely we will need community support in terms of like building that out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so for people who are like interested in ZK development or like where you can kind of have a role, I agree we need as best education as possible. I'd say that the main areas kind of feel like one, like working on compilers to some degree, like two, working on like actually designing these systems, like the identity systems and like, because the thing is, is most of like what you do on Ethereum, I don't think it makes sense to be like private diet by default. Like it would be these like specific applications that you're building. So um, yeah, I'd say that like those are two areas. And then maybe the last one is like, how can I um, contribute in terms of like offering my compute, right? Like, uh, like prover pools and, and things like that. So just kind of understanding the surface area of where it is that you can contribute. And um, like, like just checking out the learning resources and who's like working on those things, I think is important. and. Yeah, hop into the Discord communities, I think is really helpful as well. Like we run a pretty vibrant Discord and we've got a lot of people uh, uh, doing cool stuff there. And um, I think that the community, it seems like everyone here in crypto is just super friendly, but it's sometimes we don't like always like, like cross collaborate as much as I feel like we should. And 
it's just surprising how friendly everyone is. So just reach out to anyone and just talk to them. If you have questions, if you want to learn about something, just don't be shy. And I think we can grow a lot from each other. Awesome. So cross community, education, basically working together. You know, that's, that is the message. So like, we're in our last kind of like five minutes. Like, it, does anyone have any questions? Any sort of burning questions? Because I'm going to get each project to kind of uh, tell us what their call to action is, if they have anything coming up, if they want to let you all know about something. So just go through, from starting from you, Dave, uh, what does Taco want everyone to know about? Um, OK, so it's hard to say exactly but I would say try to run a node on Tyco. If you're interested in running clients and you're somewhat interested in um, hardware, because that will get you down the rabbit hole of like how can you almost be like this next generation miner and uh, be like a, yeah, a ZKP like generator or someone who's like earning some funds on a roll up. I think it would be a great intro into like being an uh, infrastructure operator. So that's the first, I'd say run a node. Um, second, just maybe look into the protocol and uh, see if you have any questions for us. And you can ask it on our on our Discord. Uh, we really love talking about our protocol and the designs that we've came up with and pitfalls and things like that. So those are my two. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Pat. Yeah. Um, definitely, you know, if you're interested in what we're trying to build, follow us on our um, social media, uh, Twitter, etc. And you know, like uh, we will be having our uh, alpha test net coming up, and uh, you know, really just go to our website, you can try it out for yourself, download the Transgate, mint one or two SBTs, just see how it's like, get a feel of it, and you know, just always welcome your feedback. Okay. Um, I would say, you know, we have been in December, uh, it's Paris. Um, you know, from our experience over there, um, around thousands of people in the DK event. Uh, but even that, I would say we are still very early, super, super early. So uh, one suggestion, or you know, I would say, don't just uh, watch. Maybe you should jump in this time. Um, let's explore this uh, future together. Awesome. So you heard it there, folks. Jump in, right? <laughs> so get onto Tyco Discord. Get onto ZK Pass, ZKM. Um, make sure you chat to these folks as well uh, when they when they get up and like find out a bit more. Talk to each other. Um, we've actually got like networking drinks um, starting at four, so you can hang around for that as well. But thank you very much. This has been absolutely amazing. Thank you.